David, Jordan, congratulations. You've made it into the third round of this competition. Good job. If you thought the last six hours was tough, it's nothing compared to the next five days, because we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate an iconic weapon from history. And that weapon is the Tall War. Hummel. I could comfortably make a blade like this in a week, and I can uncomfortably make one in five days. <laughs> After five days, you'll return and present your finished tall wars to our panel of expert judges. Only after they've put them through a series of brutal tests will they declare one of you the Forged and Fire champion, who also walks away with that check for 10 grand. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. It's day one. We're at my home forge in Kalkaska, Michigan. Hopefully, today I can get my blade rough forged. That, that's the plan, anyway. I've never done a sword of this magnitude of difficulty, so we'll see how it turns out. I just got to make it perfect because my competitor is really good. So day one, I'd like to be a little further, of course, but uh, all in all, it's been a good day. It's day two. I'm trying to get this blade a little longer and to fit the parameters. I'm getting a little worried. This fuller is buckled right here. When the fuller starts to buckle, it means that the wall on either side is really thin and is starting to move around. And there's a danger of grinding through when you go to the grinder. So I'm going to start this blade over. Back to working on the fuller. I'm a little behind where I hoped I'd be. And uh, I'm exhausted. Finally, I'm gonna call that good. All right, day four. The blade's done. Now it's time for the handle. I've never made an entirely metal handle, and the handle is a tricky piece of forge work, so I'm a little nervous. This is uh, as hard as I expected. Uh, it's cracking like crazy. I'm seeing all these cracks in my handle, and I don't have any way to fix them. I'm starting over. Restarting the handle puts me about five hours behind. It's going to be crunch time. I'm ready to be done with this handle. I was determined not to screw it up, and here I am screwing it up again. Day five, I had this crazy idea of doing a Damascus handle, but the Damascus that I made was too hard. So we're going to plan B, which is the hollow form pipe. Don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. The advantage of this was no drilling. It's uh, pretty much ready to go. And so now we're actually going to get the blade polished, get the handle welded up, get it epoxy to the blade, feeling relieved, and then chop some stuff. There we go. That makes me happy. Nice. All right, gentlemen, this is the sharpness test. Now, the tool war was a blade respected throughout India. So to test the sharpness of your blade, I'll be cutting into these sugar canes. Dave, you're up. Are you ready? Absolutely. All right. I, I know my weapon's sharp, but there's always that little bit of doubt. The sugar cane speaks for itself. There's a lot of weight in this, but it's not bad. It's balanced very well. So the design of your knuckle bow, uh, being inside where this, this pummel is, if my hand slips back there, I'm kind of whacking into that. But it's sharp. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Jordan. You ready? I'm ready. OK, let's do this. I just love sabers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cutter. It's fast, it's light, but the profile of your handle could be a little bit larger for my hand. But all in all, the cuts speak for themselves. It just passed through with no resistance whatsoever. Nicely done. Our blades, they're performing almost identical. This is going to be tight. The Tall War, a battle-tested weapon. But what kind of lethal damage does this weapon do? 
To find that out, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. David, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Doug in the ballistics dummy, this is the test that I wanted to see. I'm just, like, super excited. Your edge of your blade is sharp enough to cut and lacerate the whole torso here, cutting deep and cutting into bones. Same thing with the clavicle over here and into the ribs. Your handle construction is a little bit on the wider side, but it's wieldable. Overall, your weapon will kill. Good job. Thank you. Jordan, you're next. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Jordan, let's talk about your blade. Your edge geometry here definitely lends itself to be a very good thruster. It's sliced in easily. Your edge is razor sharp, that I'm able to lacerate into the dummy and break some bones. Your handle is a little bit on the skinny side, but I'm still able to index and hold on to it. Your weapon will kill. After this round, it feels like two to two. Dave and I still feel really even. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. The Tulwar is a battle-tested weapon known to actually take heads in combat. To test the strength and durability of your blades, I'll be chopping four times into these beef rib sides. This is not about what your blade does to the beef, but what these ribs do to your blades. All right, Dave, you're up. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> a side of beef is extremely tough. It could potentially break a blade or chip a blade or bend a blade, so I'm concerned. OK, Dave, I've got a little bit of chipping and rolling right where the impact is. It's not deep, but it is there. All in all, it felt good. All right, Jordan, you ready? Guess so. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous. You know, getting through the bone is going to be tricky, and all I can think is, please don't chip, please don't chip. Took a little shrapnel off that one. I can run my fingernail along that edge and not feel anything. No bumps, no chips. Still straight, everything's still tight. Good job. Thank you. I'm breathing a huge sigh of relief, but I know that also my handle's a little small and people have been sent home for handles before. David Jordan. Both of you have made excellent blades, and you've been fantastic competitors. But in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Before I announce who that is, the judges have some feedback for both of you. Dave, you brought us a weapon that was a pleasure to use. It's a heavy weapon, but you balanced it out beautifully. Nice job. Thank you. Doug? Jordan, the artistry of your handle is matched by the beauty, strength, and sharpness of your blade. Well done, sir. Gentlemen, when weapons of this caliber come into this arena, these decisions are never easy. The Forged and Fire champion is... Jordan, congratulations. You were the Forged and Fire champion. Congratulations. David, you created a beautiful weapon, and it was a pleasure to use it. And this decision came down to the finest details. Basically, the positioning of that knuckle bow on your handle, and those chips that turned up in your blade in the strength test. For those two reasons, we're letting you go. David, please surrender your weapon. Absolutely no regrets. I would have liked to have done better, but I agree with the judge's decision. I came here to prove that I could hang with some of the best bladesmiths in the United States, and I think I proved that I can do that. Jordan, congratulations. You were the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving that check for $10,000. How do you feel right now? I feel great. <laughs> and uh, I feel pretty accomplished. Well, you should. What a great way to jumpstart my career in making really high-quality blades. Well done. 
This is what I've really wanted for a long time. It's why I came here. Thank you. I'm Fortune Fire Champion.